should be going around from October 27th. Um, I couldn't find October 6th, but if you have any corrections and have dire need to change them before we vote on them, then you should tell me when we go to vote on them. Other than that, um, we're going to have two presentations today. Um, our usual conversation with Dr. Gerhardt with some updates um, from the faculty senate meetings. And then we'll have a presentation later on from Steph, who is part of SPAM, the Student Peer Alcohol Monitoring Group. Okay, we're good to go. Um, Dr. Gerhardt, would you like to start us off this evening? So, <clears throat> thank you. It's nice, it's nice to be here again, and I, uh, I guess I'm looked at as a regular. So I point out I don't have a red shirt, so I don't quite fit in. No hints there, Shoshana. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have anything new to bring to the table. Let me just review where we are. Uh, I've met, uh, since our last meeting, met with Marcus, uh, Marcus Flowers. <coughs> uh, we chatted about some of the student projects and the need to, uh, I think, prioritize those projects. We went through and reviewed a type of a template of how you should look at projects and which is more important, and to putting up a time schedule and just all the I would say common sense things that one needs to apply in a very real world situation. So <clears throat> we've had a good, good healthy discussion. Uh, we are going to have Marcus and also Kyle come to the executive uh, committee of the faculty senate this Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning. So they're invited as uh, we regularly look to exchange each other's uh, roles with the uh, opposing, if you will, the cooperative senate. Uh, so that will come about. Uh, in terms of anything else, I would just really comment what I've said before. I think it would be most valuable if particularly you as the student senate look at a project. You've mentioned several things over the uh, different times I've been here and my discussions with Marcus and Kyle. <clears throat> which project you'd like to focus on in particular where you might uh, effectively utilize the faculty assistance. <coughs> You know, we talked, for example, last time about the uh, drop deadline uh, and how that may be coincident or not with uh, the second exam in the course. And, and I pointed out that one has to really look at that in a bit of research to see if that really is a, a singular issue or just scattered and could be easily uh, resolved by just talking to the individual professors uh, involved or whether there should be some policy or practice established, but basically to find out how widespread is this an issue to students. And so the ball is back in the student senate court uh, to look at uh, doing a survey of the students to really evaluate to what extent this is an issue and how important it is and how then we can resolve it. And I think the faculty senate would be glad to help uh, and work with you to try to do that. But uh, overall, I think we need to come to grips with one of the projects that uh, you brought up uh, from time to time and decide which one we want to approach uh, as a joint effort of the Student Senate and Faculty Senate. So I'll just uh, underscore, I think that what the opportunities are wonderful. There are open lines of communication between the two Senates. There are the only constituencies on campus that have their own Senate, that is the students and the faculty. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to hearing from you and I guess Marcus and Kyle on uh, Wednesday to give a brief summary of what projects are of interest and in what priorities uh, to the students and how the faculty senate might interact. So I think that should be an interesting, uh, you know, several minutes at the, the faculty senate meeting and make everyone aware and see if we can focus on one of them and <coughs> do something together for the benefit of both. So. Uh, Today, Justin will be taking cues, so we'll open for any discussion. Thank you. So, Marcus, you're the undergrad rep for Public Senate? Uh, pardon me? So, your position on the Public Senate is what? Uh, I don't have a position on the Faculty Senate. What is the title? I'm just the chair of the Academic Affairs Committee. You might be thinking of last year where I was one of the representatives for the Faculty Senate Curriculum Committee. Okay. But this year, those two representatives are Paul and Jessica. So, 
So I don't know if Brad Stone has a rep rep spot on Valley Sand somewhere. Uh, Curriculum Committee, yes. Okay. There's also a grad uh, student as well. Okay. You know that's going through at all? Mm -hmm. Is that working right now? Do you know? Uh, I haven't had any communication with them yet, but yes. Okay. For my knowledge, there's no need to wait. Yeah. Yeah. There was a third guy who was, like, a third student was there. I just don't know if there was a graduate student. Right, if there was a third student, there was a third student, then it was the graduate student. Dr. Gerhardt, is there a position <coughs> for the graduate students on the curriculum committee? Uh, we, we don't have a position uh, directly identified. Certainly, if that were needed, I think we could I can bring that to the Senate and decide what we could do about that. But at this point, uh, you know, we wanted to start off by having uh, joint visitations, you know, in this case of myself, to your Senate and representatives from here, Kyle and whoever, depending on what the issue might be, to the faculty Senate and see what we can do. I think the key is we, we have the options to do whatever we like at the moment. Uh, we can always create the positions if that were to help. Of course, we can. <coughs> I really would like to focus on, on the task at hand to very carefully identify what uh, you really like to do in a prioritized way and how the faculty senate might, might assist in that. I think it would be much better to get the credibility uh, established between as a working partnership. Uh, but certainly organizationally, we can, we can do what we like, but we don't necessarily have it at the moment. Thank you, Zofie. Do the graduate students want to talk about anything specific they'd like to work with the faculty senate on? No, I'm under the impression Kyle asked us for a rep at one point, and we left one, and I haven't heard a word back yet. So I'm looking into that now. Queues open. Uh, there is a representative, of, there's a grad student spot reserved. There's two undergrads, one graduate on the faculty senate curriculum committee. I do not have the name of the person off the top of my head. I'm currently trying to get the name. It's Jen Kyle. Okay. There's a reference. Okay, thanks. Was it then Kyle? I thought? Jen, Jennifer Kyle. Jennifer Kyle, Kyle, Kyle I believe name. that's who it is. Okay, have you met, has she been attending your meetings? No. Has she been contacted? No. I don't think Jess or I remember the name of the per the third student we saw at the other meeting, but it was a guy, so I'm relatively certain it's not Yeah, so. so I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. Who is in charge of the emailing list for when you're having meetings? Can you add Jen Kyle to that? I believe Kyle just pass on the information to add on her name to your email list. Yes, I can do that. Okay, we'll send you her information. Okay, would you just send me an email? Much easier that way. Here's open. Um, Marcus, do you know what you can, do you know what <coughs> projects you and Kyle are planning to highlight on Wednesday? Um, as far as projects that we're planning to highlight, I was going to discuss that with Kyle today, actually, but I just found out yesterday that he was going to be out of town. So. Um, Again, I figured that Kyle had talked to uh, the other chairs. I know what project I would like to advocate for, but I would like to also, I'm sure we're going to get the input with Kyle and the other chairs before we officially decide on what project we want to put forward as a Senate as our priority with the faculty Senate. Okay. Which one are you thinking of? Well, I have my preferences as the academic affairs chair, but I don't have to know what the preferences of Michael or uh, Lexi might be, but mine personally would be the research. This was the one that was discussed at the last meeting. That's why I, mean, I have my own little uh, chicken scratching, so to speak, of the various projects. Each time, but we seem to talk about one project and a different project. And uh, I really would suggest organizationally, we, we're here to help. I really want to underscore that we have all the willingness and uh, ability to do that. I, I think that uh, if I could ask publicly now that the like, meeting on, on Wednesday. We don't have you know, an awful lot of time. We really want to summarize your top, pick a number, three, four, or five 
projects briefly you know, with the title, uh, a little description of uh, what the project is, in this case, you know, your research directory, and basically a very brief description of what that means, what you would like to see, and what you've done today. And if you do that for three or four or so projects, uh, the faculty, I'm sure, will be very happy there to comment, make some suggestions right, right off the top, but more to the point, get some, I, I like the, the faculty to hear a rather concrete formulation from you and Kyle and what, on, on that day as to what the top, let's say, four projects are. And then briefly a description of each one if you want, put out a piece of paper which describes the four, and then basically try to describe what assistance uh, you may need or would like to call upon the Senate, the faculty Senate, to do. The queue is open. Any last takers? Okay, thank you for your time, Dr. Gayfar. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone needs tape, I can use it. 
Director of SPAM. So, first and foremost, what is SPAM? SPAM stands for Student Peer Alcohol Monitoring. It is a program on campus that is designed to minimize the amount of risk that happens at events, uh, mostly registered events such as the group parties that everyone likes to go to on Fridays and Saturdays. <clears throat> Students are hired to go into events and act as a second set of risk management eyes. We are funded and ran through the Student Health Center as well. So a general timeline of how we operate. Uh, 10 to 1 days before the event, myself alongside, ooh, I forgot to change that, my, mis my mistake. The coordinator of internal and external affairs will designate two or three spam monitors to the events. Uh, 30 minutes before the event itself, monitors will show up and familiarize themselves with the sober monitors, plan of action, and area of the event itself. Throughout the duration of the event, monitors <coughs> will walk around and look for risky behavior or other concerns. Any risk that they see or potential scenarios that they deem as risky will be brought to the head of the organization's leadership. For example, if they see that people are dancing on bars where they could slip and fall, they'll grab one of the sober hosts and say, hey, you know, you might want to fix that. So 30 minutes after the event, monitors will talk to the head of sober monitors as a final wrap-up of the night, tying any loose ends and giving some insight on what could have helped to make the night go smoother. Uh, the organization will sign off on a paper or complete a small survey, and the night is concluded. What we do not do. We are not policy enforcement. We are not conducting a game of gotcha. We are not here to report issues to get organizations in trouble. We are here to do the exact opposite of that. So we're not going to say, oh, there's underage drinking here, or there's um, drugs, or whatever the case may be. We're not there to do that at all. So looking towards the future of SPAM, currently we are 85% digital, with payroll being the only exception. Mon monitors will fill out surveys through Google Docs and have the host organizations fill out similar surveys on the same platform. <clears throat> Currently, with the absence of Dean Hunt, we'll be working with the Dean of Off-Campus Housing until a new Greek Dean is installed. We will try to reach out to non-Greek organizations as well. We have tried doing with the players, but since their risk management policy is so spot on, we feel that is not necessary. Uh, we're also looking to reach out to the sports teams and any other organizations that decide to host events. <clears throat> So far, our numbers have been low, but we will soon approximately double the number of monitors uh, for this coming semester. We are always looking for new monitors, and we always say that all Greeks and non-Greeks can apply. You must be a junior or senior to actually monitor, but any grade level can apply so that we can train you guys, and then, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I'm just getting over this cold. So we can get everyone trained, and by the time they are a junior, we can have them deployed properly. So, I don't just want to keep it very simple and short. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, or feedback on it? Um, just curious, you said numbers are low. How many people are involved, um, at least in the monitoring? Currently, we have 12 um, deployable members. Well, right now, we're looking to train 12 more, so we'll have 24 by the end of the semester. Thank you. Yes. Uh, by grade level, is it by credits, or is it by semesters? 
I believe it is by, uh, actually we haven't really discussed that, but I want, I want to say that it is by semester. Um, however, obviously we do not want to have 18 year old juniors applying to the program, so we generally try to keep it by semester. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you very much for speaking to us this evening. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, in terms of applying, is there an ap application opening and deadline? And where do we find those kinds of materials? Generally, we have a rolling application status, um, or hiring status, excuse me, where at any time you want to apply to the program, you simply email uh, me, the director, our coordinator of internal, <coughs> coordinator of external, or Tara Schuster, who is our advisor for the chapter. You email one of us, or you can come up to the fourth floor of Academy Hall and the Dean of Students, Dean of Students Life Org uh, <coughs> Office. Ask for an application. We can email you one, or you can pick one up out there. Either way, you fill it out, bring it back to us, and we'll get you all set. Thank you very much. Welcome. Lexi. Um, so I, I personally, this is the first time I've heard of this program, and I see that you've come to talk to Senate about it. I was yeah. wondering if there's anything specifically you want Senate to do to advertise this program coming to speak to us. Um, <coughs> as far as advertisement goes, I honestly can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, honestly, just get the word out as best as you can. Um, if you have you know, like friends who are looking for jobs that are proficient in risk management, anything like that, I honestly, doing anything you guys can would help greatly to the program. So. I was actually coming here tonight to ask for feedback if you guys have any on how the program is being run, but I guess not many of you have heard about the program, so sorry. Um, I'm going to pull myself on the um, sure. is this, um Is it automatically um, added to any event, or does the event, can the event opt down? The event can be turned down, assuming the incorrect paperwork is submitted. For the most part, um, <clears throat> It's any event that we deem is necessary. So basically, uh, are you familiar at all with the application of events to, uh, system? No. So uh, for most Greek, how, for excuse me, all of the Greek organizations, they will submit paperwork 10 calendar days before the event itself. So we receive the paperwork. We will see which houses are um, having events, what nights. And then we go from there saying, oh, um, I'm sorry to throw you on this spot, Di, but Pipes is having a event um, <laughs> next weekend. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the letters, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to actually throw you under the bus. But we'll, yeah, no. but we'll say, oh, Pipes is having an event next weekend. Uh, we'll see which monitors are available to go to said event, and then we'll deploy them thusly. We do not usually do formals unless they specifically ask us, and even then we still hesitate to, but for the most part, we just say, oh, we'll see who's at the events, and send them their way. Any other? He's open. Uh, you mentioned clubs and sports teams. Mm -hmm. Is this solely for campus events, or is this possibly for other events? Yes, we generally stay on campus. The only exceptions when we don't stay on campus would be to the houses that are not near campus, such as SAE, uh, Bay Pie, stuff like that. But we are strictly on campus stuff. So I just want to clarify, if you're having an event like, say, Greeks, that they know they're going to have alcohol at, are you required to submit to the alcohol mentoring program? Or is this something that if somebody, you know, wants somebody for you, say wants you guys to come to their event, then they apply, like, um, how does that work? Is it required, for instance, like if you're a Greek house, and do you have to submit to this program? Uh, you don't have to submit to this for program specifically, mm -hmm. but any Greek house that's going to have an event where there is alcohol and minors present, they do have to submit the paperwork. For example, if chi is having a formal, they have to submit paperwork saying, oh, we are having an event, but it's going to be a formal where we won't be deployed. But again, if Pikes is having a luau, then luau keeps party, then we will be there. So. <laughs> Everyone has to submit paperwork, but some events do, we will monitor as opposed to other events that do not require us. Um, is this program paid for by Student Health Services, or does the group having the event have to? Nope, it is completely through Student Health Services. Um, every monitor per event is paid, so. It is technically a job, but everything is through the student health center. Uh, 
since you have 12 monitors, are you running low of monitors currently? Because there are probably about four or five events every weekend. Um, yes, but with our increase of 12, more, 12 new monitors, by the end of the semester, we should have 24. So we should be good by then. But yeah, we are running a little low. The is open. Uh, how long has Span been around? Span has been, I believe, since 2010. The queue is open. It's one last thing. Could you go back? Did you have like a goal slide? Because I was just oh. curious, what's like the ultimate goal of this program? Because I know you monitor, but say like there's really bad alcoholic activity, do you guys call the police or is it just like an observational? It is mostly observational. Again, we are not policy enforcement. However, if there is a situation where we are required to act, uh, we will do so um, with discretion and at the discretion of the house itself. So for instance, if a monitor notices someone's not looking too well, they'll first uh, talk to the sober hosts, see what they want to do. If they feel emergency services is necessary, then again, they'll talk to the house and see what they want to do. Did I answer the entire? Uh, how can people best get involved if they don't exactly want to monitor? They don't have the time. Is there another way to get involved with spam instead of monitoring? Um, generally, everyone who does get involved is a monitor. But if you do want to come to our general body meetings, definitely get in touch with me. Thank you, Jess. Um, again, you could just shoot me an email and say, oh, I just you know, want to see what the program's about. Okay. Definitely contact me, let you know when our meetings are, and you can get a feel for it. The queue is open. Any last takers? Okay, so thank you for coming to speak with us. Um, for the SPAM program or any of the um, risk management services that are going on with the health center, um, I'll get you in touch with staff and anyone really there. Thank you for coming to me. Has everyone got a chance to look at the minutes that were going around from October 27th? Were there any corrections? There we're also voting on October 6th, but I couldn't print them out because I couldn't find them. So if you have dying corrections. Should have already looked at them. Oh, okay. Hey, that email. Okay. 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 Okay.
all opposed? Oh, I'm stating. Okay, so with that because Arizona's not back yet. <laughs> Maybe. This motion passes 15, <laughs> one, two. <laughs> that's one missing. We're working on it. Oh, okay, Mike just left. Okay, that's fine. All right, um, I have updates from Kyle, and then we'll move on to constituent reports. Um, oh, slowly, please. Committee and constituent reports, sorry. Um, first, he wants to congratulate the engineers for beating Union College after a two great beginnings. Um, he wants to remind the graduates that there is still one vacancy for the graduate senator because he really wants to have a full Senate because we haven't done this in a number of years. Um, he wants to remind you about the student Senate survey, but Jen was kind enough to hand out posters, which you should all hang up. Um, and then next week's meeting will feature a presentation by Rules and Elections about electronic voting, as well as a presentation from the S Student Sustainability Task Force, which is SSTF. It used to be a Senate committee, by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, but they've gone to bigger and better things, and they're going to talk about the Green Revolving Fund that they are proposing. Um, lastly, Jen sent out her tabling sign up, so everyone should fill that out. Um, you haven't sent that out yet? No. Okay, send that up at the end of the meeting, please. Yeah. So I'm not a liar. <laughs> okay. All right. Who is up first? Rules elections. Paul. We're apparently presenting next week. <laughs> okay. No one told us. Uh, Mel, sure. Mel knows. Mel has a cover. That's because um. Uh, Don't worry, we'll get it. Yeah. Michael, I have a kind of been talking about presentation. Also, we're making progress on the two different things we're working on, and apparently should have the code for electronic voting ready to demo by the end of the semester. Academic affairs. So, academic affairs. I had a meeting with the vice provost this morning, and <coughs> quick story is that half of our projects are half of our projects are being entirely revamped. I will talk to my committee in the near future and send out an email to them. Uh, before I forget, Thursdays, 7 to 8 p.m., that's when we meet. But otherwise, we're going to be picking a project that we want to pitch to the Faculty Senate as our priority, and we're going to look for quick input from anybody else before Wednesday morning if they feel there's any projects that they have that they're working on they want the Faculty Senate to help with it. If you have any ideas for that, we need that information in by noon on Tuesday. Tomorrow, Tuesday, tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, so noon tomorrow. Uh, student government communications, um, So we're postering for the Senate survey, as you guys know. We're also uh, gonna poster for uh, HSAC and Universal Access this week. Um, next week we're going to start tabling sign-up sheet to be sent out shortly. Um, just for a few major events, and our next meeting is tomorrow night, Tuesday, 8 to 9 p.m. in SGS. Thank you. Michael, facilities services. Um, we're making some good progress on the friendly housing. Um, as far as Arizona goes, um, the status of it right now is that it is probably going, it is coming back, just not at the 99 cent price point, so we're trying to determine if it's the 99 price or the not 99, or if it's the actual drink, so trying to figure that out hopefully through the Senate survey. Yes, it's both. It's both. Okay, I don't think it's either. We're gonna get we're gonna get the data from the Senate survey. We asked a couple questions about Arizona. Yes. Either way, don't let it leave this room. I mean, it's being recorded, so. It's okay. It's okay. Um, <coughs> besides that, we're working on our project. I'm going to add everyone to our Slack soon. I'm going to send out an email later tonight. So if you want to be involved in the conversations with FSC, but you don't want to come to the meetings, um, you can do that. But you should still come to my meetings at 4 o'clock. No, 5 o'clock on Tuesdays. Yeah. My turn. Um, so apparently there are posters going up. It's interesting. Um, Jen, can we talk after the meeting about that? Just yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. that anyway, of course it's Kyle. Anyway. Um, so we're just about done benchmarking meal plans. We'll be going over that tomorrow in our meeting right after FSC's meeting at 6 p.m. So feel free to show up, and join us. 
Um, our, our next meeting with hospitality services is this Wednesday, so tomorrow we'll be finishing your plan benchmarking and then preparing for that meeting as well. We're still looking for some more membership, which is why we're postering. Um, so if you know anyone who's interested in HSAC, please have them contact me, email me uh, as soon as you can. Thanks. Lexi, student life. All right, our committee's been working on various things. Uh, our Health Center Services Group is working to get a pharmacy proposal ready for a full service pharmacy in the union as opposed to the prescription delivery from last year. And <clears throat> we're looking at uh, putting forward another proposal for residence life for various improvements in each specific residence hall that we have on campus. And then I'll let Paul give some updates about the student policy group. Yeah, um, I met with Lydia Rest from the Counseling Center earlier today, and Dean Smith came to our committee meeting last week, and we talked about some talk and updated us on what the policy is probably going to look like, along with the fact that it needs to be updated by July, that the federal or something was passed in the federal register of policies and stuff, and it's kind of changed some of the stuff that they're looking at changing, that they're looking at for the setup for the judicial process. Also, the Good Samaritan policy will be as it was in the previous editions of the handbook because some groups felt that um, adding hazing to be covered by the Good Samaritan policy we essentially made it sound like the school was endorsing hazing. And also, later this week, I'll be meeting with Alex and Tara from the Health Center. And I guess I may as well hop on Joe's train of talking to Jen since we haven't actually started working on universal access in the subcommittee, though it's apparently in a nebulous area between Case and I subcommittee, so yeah. Yeah, we haven't gone to it yet, but we will be working on it. So universal access will be handled either through Paul's or Case's uh, subcommittees. But. It's in the Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, tomorrow we will be meeting with uh, the director of parking and transportation, uh, the operations manager, rather. He will be reviewing the quote with us because we'll actually be purchasing the tracking devices like really, really soon. Um, so we'll see some visible results on that. Um, also, the Senate survey is up. We worked on that this past week. So as you guys have been doing, posting on Facebook, continue that. Um, otherwise, that's it. Yep. Can I take your website? Yeah, sure. Um, in terms of the student government website, um, the second focus group was conducted by Tina on Friday. Uh, in terms of actual development, we started the home, uh, I started the home page, um, working on the on the actual page layout and uh, making sure it's standard to um, so that we can apply it to all the different pages. Okay. Uh, Morgan isn't here for community relations and then get an update. So is Nathan. Um, the executive board didn't meet last week, so there's no updates except for the usual <coughs> budgeting timeline, which I announced last week. So we're going to go to Kristen, the graduate council. Um, graduate council is having a movie night on Friday with UPAC Cinema. We are taking over their 7 p.m. showing of Guardians of the Galaxy. So if any of you guys want to watch a movie with a lot of graduate students, you can go to that showing. <laughs> what time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Friday there. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Um, our polos came in. They look awesome. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it for now. Okay. IMC, James? So Men's Greek Hockey Night is this Friday, November 7th, and the Greek Service Day, the date was definalized, so we have no idea what it is, but it will happen. Is it Friday at 7? Friday at 7, yep. Okay. okay. Um, one last thing. Uh, so apparently Cody is very, very allergic to peanuts, so um, if you guys want candy for wearing your polos, you can come back with me to the GMP office and welcome them to have candy, but we're not going to distribute the peanut butter candy, so that way she doesn't have an allergy. I didn't know she wasn't coming here today, so I know that this discussion is <laughs> weird, but I'm just announcing in general that candy will be after the meeting. Um, does anyone have any new or unfinished business? Questions from the press? I just want to compliment the photos. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, meeting adjourned, Let everybody. Have a good day. So, it's just again, You're off our list.